All right, so this is when uh, the taco bar is kicking in from lunch. Um, it's awesome to be here. This has been my first time at LSI, and so it's been a great it's been a great opportunity to to just network with um, such a, an amazing uh, array of people. But it's uh, what I'm here for is to introduce Capstan Medical, which is a, a new look at how to address structural heart disease. Um, this is just to anchor us. Um, this is the data from tw uh, 2019 from CDC. So heart disease continues to be the greatest uh, cause of death in the US, and this data translates to worldwide. Um, heart disease is complex, though. There are a ton of different things that go into that 23%, that um, uh, all the way from ischemic diseases to structural. So let's dig in here. But uh, the structural heart market is dramatically un, un, underpenetrated. Um, and honestly, uh, if you went to the keynote yesterday with uh, Bernard, I should have followed right after his talk because he introduced the market opportunity even better there. But uh, let's start with prevalence. So it is age related. Structural heart is age related. There are 56 million uh, uh, greater than 65 in the US. And the latest data that came out in 2023 is 13.5% of that population have some form of structural heart uh, uh, disease. So what does the prevalence look like by valve? So prevalence by valve, the vast majority of that is the mitral valve, um, just under 40%. Um, and then you can see the aortic sits around a, a quarter of that. Tricuspid is fairly underdiagnosed. Um, however, it seems to be very uh, concurrent with mitral. So the mixed uh, uh, percentage that you see there is very predominantly mitral and tricuspid. So Let's look at what the treatment looks like. So on the right, you will see mitral and tricuspid, which is over 5 million patients. Um, and it is about 2.5% penetrated. Aortic, which is only 25% of that population that's, that's there, is around 12% penetrated. And you start to look at that, and you're like, why is that? Well, that's because, oh, <laughs> that's because this is the standard of care for uh, mitral. Uh, open heart surgery is traumatic, it is painful, the recovery is really, really challenging. And so people avoid this because they really, really don't want to, to uh, have this be their, their, um, their treatment method. So our team looked really hard at this. Um, uh, and it was very quickly seen that the current devices that are out there are amazing. The Gen 1 devices are really starting to collapse down small. They're, they're getting into position. But they have 70 to 90% exclusion. So they're not compatible with the patients that are out there. And so when the team was digging in, I'm like, well, why is that? It's because the valve needs to be really compact. So if the valve needs to be really compact and precise, you need a way to get it there and position it very precisely. And so precise valve technology can really leverage robotics. So let's see what that looks like. So we're going for precise, predictable, and compact. What you see here is this is our device. Um, this is running it on uh, our simulated model. Uh, on the left, you see our digital twin. This is all the commands that are uh, being put into our robot to drive the catheter. And then you're seeing the catheter here. So let's start with compact. This is femoral access, transeptal, less than thir 32 French, um, which is what the clinical market believes uh, uh, can be compatible with the vast majority of patients. The end payload is 35 millimeters, um, which gives it a high level of maneuverability. But what you'll see here, it has a huge range of motion, incredibly tight curves that can put it into position because it's leveraging robotic architecture. And the other thing you see here is as you unsheath, the valve does not pop open. This is all cinched down internally, so you can do slow and controlled deployment of the implant all the way through the intervention. You can reposition, you can optimize the, the position, you can double and triple check your imaging. Um, as when you get open a little bit beyond this, the new leaflets start to activate. We do not need to fast pace these patients in order to do this. And when you are perfectly happy with the positioning, you release the valve and you're done. 
Um, this is the product that we will take to First in Human this year. Um, the, in the future, we are already mapping algorithms to back out. Any, who's got a back out camera on their car? That's one of the biggest challenges in structural heart right now. You do an amazing intervention, and then you got to get out of the leaflets. And so we're working through the back out camera. So how Capstan is looking at this is we have a robotic platform and highly capable catheters that you just saw in action. Just where we saw the biggest need in this market is mitral valve. And so we are starting with the mitral valve. And this is the, the first in human product that we are targeting at the end of this year. We have a tricuspid valve that's queued up behind this as well. This has already been integrated with the robot, um, has gone through early preclinical testing, um, and is ready to take off the shelf and, and, and move into full testing once we, we're highly focused on mitral right now. But the really interesting thing that we've learned over this past year um, from our clinical advisors and the cardiologists that we're talking to, they said if they have this device in their clinic, they would do the aortic. And so, which I was kind of surprised about, um, but I spent the first 20 plus years of my career at a company known in, as Intuitive Surgical. And it was really interesting because I thought about it and I was like, the robot had, had foundational surgeries like prostatectomy that couldn't be done minimally invasive without it. But now, how is that being used? It's being used across a ton of different procedures and, and kind of fondly known as pull-throughs, if you have a good, highly capable device in your clinic, you're gonna use it. And so we have put into our roadmap an aortic that will go further down. Wanna call this out though? This happens, comes together with a very purposefully curated team. So we brought a team together in structural heart, and in robotics. We have representation for all the main uh, uh, heart valve companies and all the main robotic companies. Uh, we very purposefully have placed them in Santa Cruz, which is near the talent pool um, of the Bay Area, but with a really entrepreneurial and, and creative vibe um, on the coast in California. But so this team is pulled together. We are actually, I'm actually not in an active race right now. <laughs> um, we closed our Series B last year and we will be moving forward uh, with a Series C either later this year or early 2025. We're scoping it out right now. Um, but we are taking the full platform uh, 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 program forward. But with that, that's what I have. Thank you.